I'm Pastor George Borkard, and this is another Higher Things video short. Infant baptism, scriptural and historic references to it. That's the subject of today's Higher Things video short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, donate. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, pass it on the faith to the next generation. Like our videos, subscribe to our channel, ring the bell for notifications, and donate. Hey, buddy, you want this treat? Your tax deductible gift may not wake up Thor, but it does help hire things. An organization which has been teaching children the faith for 20 years it helps us keep going. And we need your help during this pandemic. We are desperate for your help now. Give today. All right. So I did a video last week on my baptismal birthday, Cinco de Mayo, right there, um, which got sparked a lot of discussion, especially about infant baptism, uh, including some folks who posted some videos about how infant baptism isn't biblical. They couldn't be more wronger or wrong. Uh, I think the best source text for, Ma uh, for, for infant baptism is Matthew 28, and that is um, 18 and 19. Uh, eight, As you are going, make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to hold dear everything I have commanded, and lo, I am with you always to the very end of the age. All nations means all nations, not all nations, except for part of the nation which may be a baby. Acts 2, Peter's Pentecost sermon, he says, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. The promise of the Holy Spirit is for you and your children. Little ones, for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God shall call. That's Acts 2, 38 and 39. Whole households were baptized in Acts, Acts 16, 15, 33. That's not just all households, except for the little ones. Romans 6 speaks of baptism as part of as us dying with Jesus and rising with Jesus, um, dying to sin and living. Um, and that is referenced also in Galatians 3. I desire no, uh, um, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but he lives in me in the life that I live. Now I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave up his life, gave his life for me. We are clothed with Christ in the waters of baptism. Baptism is the new circumcision. Uh, that's a Colossians 2 reference. Um, I think one of the better texts, which I've learned to appreciate about baptism in my later life, is Mark 10. Everybody who's trying to keep children from baptism are trying to keep children from Jesus. And you know how he feels about that? Because the disciples had kids running up to Jesus. They tried to stop them. And Jesus rebuked them. He said, let the little children come to me and hinder them not, for such belongs the kingdom of God. In Matthew 18, he says, to be to be saved, you have to be like a child. So why all of a sudden would we turn that on its head and say, no, there's a height requirement for, for children to be saved? What about in the history of the church? Well, Justin Martyr, 100 to 66 AD, um, about 150 in his Decalogue, uh, his, I'm sorry, in his dialogue with uh, Trypho the Jew, makes reference to infant baptism. Irenaeus, 130 to 200, in his Against the Heresies, says that Jesus came to save all through means of himself, all, I say, who through him are born again of to God. Infants and children, boys and young men uh, and old men. Origin, 188, 184, 254. Cyprian, 215 to 258, the Council of Carthage, all make reference to infant baptism. We ought not hinder any person from baptism and the grace of God, especially infants, those newly born. Origin, for this is also, it is it was that the church had from the apostles to tradition a tradition to give baptism even to infants. And when Cyprian, when Origen wrote of Luke 14, infants are to be baptized for the remission of their sins. Cyprian, 
Should we wait until the eighth day, as did the Jews in circumcision? No, the child should be baptized as soon as it is born. St. Augustine, the custom of our mother church in, in baptizing infants must not be counted needless, nor believed to be other than a tradition of the apostles. And Augustine, the whole church, which hastens to uh, baptize infants because it unhesitantly believes that otherwise they cannot possibly be vivified, made alive in Christ. More Augustine, in case infants were ill, if they were offered to baptize them, even though it were the day that they were born, such was to be done. So the idea that infant baptism is somehow a later addition is just wrong. It was done in the early church because baptism delivers Jesus. This is important. This is very, very important. Baptism delivers Jesus. If you understand that baptism delivers Jesus, that baptism saves, 1 Peter 3, not just the removal of dirt, but the pledge of God of a clean conscience before God, if baptism is a thing God does to you in delivering his son, then it doesn't matter how old you are before that you're baptized, which is faithful to the scripture, gift is for you and your children, and let the little children come to me and hinder them not. But if baptism, as with our evangelical and Baptist friends, is something you do for God, well, then you better have a cognitive link to gather. You better make a decision before being baptized. Well, what about faith in baptism? Well, Baptism delivers the Holy Spirit who works faith where and when he pleases in those who hear the gospel. So baptism delivers the very faith that it requires. All of this is, again, in agreement with Scripture and the history of the church. The idea that somehow infant baptism can be divorced from the history of the church, the history of Christianity, is just smoking crack cocaine and isn't in line with anything which we know of in the early church. Now, I'm not telling you this in order that you beat your Baptist and evangelical friends over the head with a bunch of scripture verses. What I'm saying is that your baptism, the baptism of your children, the baptism of your grandchildren, is faithful to the scriptures. Because all means all. All nations. This gift is for you and your children, little babies. And let the little children come to me and hinder them not for such belongs the kingdom of God. You don't need to be re-baptized if you were baptized as an infant because that baptism stuck. Because it wasn't about you making a decision for God, but God marking you, circumcising you in a circumcision done without hands. Colossians 2. And if it was okay in the Old Testament to mark children on the eighth day and claim them as Israelites, it's okay in the New Testament to mark children as Christians and to raise them in the faith. Here's a video about how catechism, a catechesis teaching is required in baptism, but it is enough to say today, no height or age requirement on baptism. Well, it is is Jesus delivering his cross and resurrection to his people, marking them, burying them with him, and raising them with him. And if you liked what I did in this video, rattling off all those verses, um, and you figure you need to jot them down, uh, don't worry about that. You don't have to. Uh, most of this is included on the LCMS FAC, FAC, which the link is there, and in your small catechism, in the description, under baptism. Th thank you uh, for, for going on this excursion with us. Um, and Thor and I, maybe an awake Thor, we'll see you tomorrow. I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this has been another Higher Things video short. <laughs>